Hi there, this is Jonathan Ginsberg. I'd like to talk to you about uh, the question of what happens uh, if you file Chapter 7 and you propose to surrender your vehicle. Basically, you say in your statement of intentions that you wish to surrender your vehicle. What happens? Um, well, there's a couple of answers to that. And I'm going to walk you through the various scenarios and the most likely one to happen. Um, so first of all, the most likely scenario is nothing is going to happen right away. And in my experience here in the, in the Atlanta area, um, if you say you want to surrender your, your car, um, nothing's going to happen until the 341 meeting, which is about 30 days in, in which case uh, a representative from the lender will appear at the 341 meeting, uh, will speak to, to my, myself and my client, to, to you and, and your attorney, uh, and say, when can we come pick up the vehicle, get the, the, the debtor's phone number, uh, and make arrangements to pick the vehicle up or have the debtor uh, bring the vehicle in. That way there's no issue about uh, personal stuff being remaining, remaining in the car and, and somebody having their car taken in the middle of the night or have it being taken from their work site. That's what happens most of the time. Most creditors are pretty reasonable about uh, getting the vehicle back. Um, it is a good idea to keep insurance in the vehicle. I think if the insurance lapses, then you could have a, a creditor that want, might want to do something else and move more quickly. But generally, uh, nothing's going to happen for 30 days. That's one possibility. Uh, another possibility is that after your case is filed, and this is normally about a week or two afterwards, I'll get a phone call from a representative of the lender that says, I see that your client wants to surrender the vehicle. Uh, can I contact him or her to make arrangements to pick the vehicle up or have him drop the vehicle off at a nearby dealership? Um, and if that's the case, I'll contact my client and say, uh, let's make arrangements to turn the vehicle in. That way you can ter terminate the insurance and everybody's happy. So that's another possibility. Um, a third possibility uh, is that the lender could file something called a motion for relief from stay. Uh, and this is kind of rare, but it does happen. Uh, they could file a motion for relief from stay where they ask the bankruptcy court to lift the automatic stay so they can go pick up the vehicle um, and be certain that the judge has, has lifted the stay. But since it takes usually two to four weeks to get into court, it's probably a lot easier and more practical just to wait to the 341 hearing. But occasionally you do see this uh, with lenders that want to be absolutely certain. And as a corollary to that, there is a provision uh, in the, uh, the code, in the local rules here in, in the Northern District of Georgia that says if the insurance lapses, uh, the lender can use an expedited process to uh, get into court on an emergency basis, uh, get the stay lifted at least temporarily uh, within just a few days. So if the insurance lapses, in theory, the lender could get into court uh, get the stay lifted so they can take temporary possession and then go forward with getting permanent possession of the vehicle. Now, if you do not say anything on your statement of intentions, and sometimes I have people that are not really willing to commit yet as to what they want to do, and we leave it blank, then basically the, the code says uh, that I believe it's within 30 days or 31 days after the uh, first date set for the meeting of creditors that the stay gets lifted automatically. So if you don't do anything um, and, and, and you go to your 341 here and the first date set for it, actually it's not the day because it could be reset, but the day it's actually set, 30 days after that, the stay would be lifted automatically according to the code. And again, we don't see that happen very often, but sometimes um, debtors, people, clients who are uh, filing bankruptcy really don't know what they want to do, uh, and they basically, they don't want to pay for the car, but they don't want to give it up, and they sort of want to stay in limbo. Um, I think that if, they, if you do nothing uh, within about a month of the first date set for the 341 hearing, I think the stay would get lifted. So uh, at some point, you're going to need to give the vehicle up. Uh, if you are filing Chapter 7 and you can't afford it, or if you're, you're not able to reaffirm it or keep it um, without reaffirming it. So big picture I would tell you is um, if you decide you're going to surrender your vehicle, the safest thing for everybody concerned is simply to uh, take your stuff out of it, get your personal possessions out of it, and be prepared to turn it over at a fairly quick notice. But if you want to use it for another 30 days, feel pretty comfortable you can use it until the 341 hearing, but you'll be giving it up after that. So that's big picture kind of how it works if you're surrendering your vehicle in Chapter 7. Uh, you'll be able to keep it for a while, but probably not much longer than 30 days. So I hope that answers that question. Uh, I know with a lot of different possibilities, but uh, again, the most likely one is you'll keep it for 30 days, and then uh, after that, you'll have to give it up. I hope this has been helpful. Again, I'm Jonathan Ginsberg. I'm an Atlanta bankruptcy uh, attorney. If you have any questions about Chapter 7, Chapter 13, or anything about personal bankruptcy, uh, please feel free to call my office, 770-393-4985. Hope this, again, has been helpful. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.